Yo, what is up guys? Welcome to episode 5 of our YouTube series and in this video I have a full length microblading procedure. So this is a step by step tutorial. Um, this is very valuable to you guys if you're a student, you know, that's just took a microblading class or you're thinking of taking a microblading class or you're thinking of, you know, getting into the industry. So it's basically step by step, you know, from numbing cream to drawing out the eyebrows to, you know, the whole microblading procedure and the before and after. So hopefully you guys do enjoy it. If you do, please drop a like down below and hit that subscribe button. And we'll see you episode six. When mapping your brows, we will be using a combination of items as to assure accuracy. The first point we will want to determine is where the height of our brow should be. Centering yourself with your client's eyes, we will determine the bottom and the top of the client's brow by creating two parallel lines. In this instance, our client has one brow slightly more arched than the other and does have a preference over this brow. We will be using this brow to match the other side. Adjust as needed, as the string will sometimes roll. By extending this line at the bottom, we will give ourselves a baseline. Any hair that is below this line may be removed with our disposable shaver. Any hair that is missing from this line may be added with the strokes. We will now center the brow. Determine your tear duct to tear duct with point one and two. By rotating the caliper, we will help determine the arch point. Rotating the caliper again will give us another measurement point on the bottom of the brow. Darken any lines if necessary. When creating the bottom of the tail, a technician may prefer to bring the pencil from the bottom to the top as to create a more tapered angle. Always soften the arch of your brow, both at the top and the bottom. A disposable shaver may be used at this point to remove any excess hair. We will want to remove hair if it will visually impair our line of sight. And the color of choice in this scenario will be espresso. We pick up enough pigment for one or two strokes and re-dip again. Minimal pigment pickup is desired as you will have a clearer view of the skin underneath. Be sure to always have your blade 90 degrees against the skin and pull with consistent pressure, lightening up slightly at the commence and the end. Adjust your stretch as you continue to progress throughout the brow. The hair pattern we have chosen in this instance will be a mixed hair pattern. As the client does have upward growing hair at the base of her brow and downward growing hair along the top of her brow. Masking the remainder of the pigment into the strokes will aid you in visually assessing what you have created and what you have yet to create. We will remove the excess with our dampened 2x2 two two aesthetic wipe. Brush your client's hair so you can see your strokes. Using a lint-free microfiber swab, we will be applying numbing gel to the area. This numbing gel is composed of lidocaine as well as epinephrine. The epinephrine will aid in preventing any bleeding, bruising, or swelling. We will commence the other brow. 
pull the skin as tight as possible and always keep your blade at a 90 degree angle. Lightening up slightly with your pressure at the beginning and the end of the stroke. There is no need to overcrowd the hair strokes together as your client will be returning for a touch-up session. This is when additional hair strokes may be added. They will find on whether the preference is to pull the blade towards themselves or to push the blade away from themselves. In this case, our technician has chosen to push away from herself while working on her client's left brow. When working on your fake skins, practice different angles to see what you prefer. Mask the color to better visually aid you. Remove any residual with a dampened 2x2. Two two. If an excess amount of pigment remains, Fastly may be used to remove the residual. It will cause less abrasion to the skin. Filling in the center portion of the brow may require you to brush your client's hair out of the way periodically, either with your blade or your spoolie brush. Always be sure to have a clear visual before you place your needle into the skin. We will be reapplying our numbing agent as to assure our client's comfort throughout the service. Continue to fill in the center of the opposing brow. Be sure to adjust your pressure at the tail of the brow as the skin on the tail is always thinner. You can check pressure depth by pressing the skin together and looking for your lymphatic fluid. Implant more pigment and depth if necessary. Always see if you can fill a gap by elongating a hair stroke rather than overcrowding. You can confirm with your client if they do see any spots that are still lacking hair strokes. receiving manual shading to conclude this session. For a more natural result, microblading may be left without the shading, but per the client's request, the shading was incorporated.
Thank you guys for watching the video. Hopefully you did enjoy it. Um, we tried to include as much as we could in that step-by-step uh, -step tutorial. So if you did enjoy it, please drop a like down below and hit that subscribe button. And we're going to be posting episode six in the next couple of days here. Hopefully I'm going to have um, another video for you guys going up tomorrow. So if you did enjoy it, just hit that like button, hit that notification bell if you guys want to get notified every time we post a video. We're going to be posting a bunch of stuff, you know, more tutorials like this, more, you know, lip blushing procedures, more microblading content, how to draw the eyebrows and different things like that to help out, you know, different students in the industry or different, you know, people that are just getting in or people are thinking of getting in. So uh, we'll see you guys in episode six. Have a great day.